Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve the multiply strings problem. Given two non-negative integers, num1 and num2, represented as strings, return the product of num1 and num2, also represented as a string. Example 1, the input num1 equals 2, num2 equals 3, the output is 6 as a string, because 2 times 3 is 6. Example 2, num1 equals 123, num2 equals 456. So the output is 56,088, represented as a string. As you can see, they also give you a few notes. The length of both num1 and num2 is less than 110. Both num1 and num2 contain only digits 0 to 9. Both num1 and num2 do not contain any leading 0, except the number 0 itself. You must not use any built-in big integer library or convert the inputs to integer directly. All right, so how can we solve this problem? We can use the multiplication algorithm that we were taught in elementary school. So um, we can just use two nested for loops. And for example here, by using the elementary algorithm, we can multiply, we start with this number and we multiply with this number and then this number by this number and we put the intermediate result here and then we move to the next number and multiply by this put it here this and this put it here and finally after we have the intermediate results we add them and we get the final result okay so that's the algorithm but um, we can also save space because uh, we can use the space uh, we can reuse the space that way we don't have to have uh, individual space for every intermediate result. So if we have an array of integers to, to store the intermediate result, we only need to use one array of integers if we reuse the space. So that's going to be an optimization we can make. All right, what else? So that's the algorithm. And um, first I just wanna save the length of num1 and num2, so integer m gets a value of num1.length and gets a value of num2.length so I need an array for the intermediate results and also for the final result and as I said I'm going to reuse the space so I'm gonna have integer array of integer values gets a value of new array of integer of size m plus n and why the size is m plus n uh, because of this. Let's say that you have um, num1 and num2. In this case, num1 is 4 and num2 is 5. When you multiply 4 times 5, you get, you get 20. The length of num1 is 1, and the length of num2 is 1 as well. So the length of the result is m plus n, or 1 plus 1. As you can see, 2. The result has two digits. So in general, when you multiply two numbers, the result is gonna have, it's gonna take n plus n digits. It's gonna, that's the number of digits of the result. So that's why I know that the result is gonna have n plus n digits. So that's why the, the length of this array or the size is n plus n. So now, as I said, I'm gonna use the elementary school multiplication algorithm and I need two nested loops for that. So I'm gonna start from right to left for integer i gets a value of m minus 1 i is greater than or equal to 0 minus minus i for integer j gets a value of m minus 1 j is greater than or equal to 0 minus minus j alright so now I have the four loops that I need and then as I said uh, this is going to allow me to multiply this number by this number and then by this number then go to this number multiply by this and by this so I'm going to multiply the corresponding numbers so I'm going to say integer multiplication gets a value of num1 that char at i minus zero as I said before in a previous video uh, I have to subtract the character zero from this character here because of the ASCII table, that way I'm going to get a corresponding integer. And then I multiply by 
num2 that char at j minus the character zero right to convert to an integer because of the ASCII table then once I have the multiplication this is just the corresponding multiplication first this with this and then this with this and then this with this and this with this alright so once I have this multiplication I want to um, I want to add I want to add it to the corresponding to whatever is in my values array at the corresponding position because I want to save space so I'm gonna say integer the sum gets a value of vals so by plus j plus one plus the multiplication all right so how did I get i plus j plus one how do I know that I have to add this number a position i plus j plus one plus the multiplication to get the sum well because of this let's say that um, if I have uh, two numbers right num1 and num2 and the length of num1 is is 2 and the length of num2 is 2 then when I find the length of the values array is n plus n so 2 plus 2 which is 4 so let's say the last element is a position of 3 because the array is 0 index so for instance here if my array if my array is of length 4 then I know that the last element in that array is a position 3 so here I have i and j let's say um, that I have i and j when I add them up I get uh, position 2 I add 1 and that's gonna give me 3 so that's how I get i plus j plus 1 to be the last position and then I can say false so by plus j plus equals the sum divided by 10 so I'm gonna put the carry in the position uh, right before the last position and then false so by plus j plus 1 I can say that that gets a value of sum modulo 10 so the rightmost digit I put at this position I plus j plus 1 so that's gonna allow me to put the I can I add the sum uh, the carry at this position and I put the uh, the rightmost digit uh, position I plus j plus 1 which is the uh, the last position so I do this every iteration and by the end I'm gonna have uh, all the results and I didn't have to use extra space because I'm doing the addition uh, in the same array every time so now my values array has the final result so now I just need to handle a corner case so I'm gonna use a stream builder stream builder sp gets a value new stream builder then for integer value in values so here I have to handle a corner case I just wanna add um, the values here I don't wanna I want to handle this case it cannot contain any leading zero alright so this case here if sp that length is not equal to zero or value is not equal to zero then sb that append value that way I'm not gonna have any leading zero in the final result for instance in this case that means that I have more more values there so so there will be no leading zero in this case maybe this is empty maybe it has nothing there but this value is not zero so this is gonna make sure that there's that there are no leading zeros in the final result then I just need to return okay I'm gonna say sb.length 
equals equals zero. If that's true, that the length is zero, I just return the value zero as a string. Otherwise, if it is not zero, I return the final result, which is sp that to string. I'm going to run the code. All right, it seems to be working perfectly. I'm going to submit a solution. All right, this is working perfectly. So as you can see, um, we have two nested loops in here. So the time complexity is big of m times n, where m is the length of num1 and n is the length of num2. If you like the video, please press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.